Hello and welcome back <laughs> to the Jolly Branchers YouTube channel. It's been a while. We went on vacation. I needed time off. Let's be blunt. And I'm a solo game developer making a murder mystery RPG called Kid Detective. Those are my qualifications. <laughs> and I'm using Fungus for the task, and so I love it. And that's why I'm doing this upcoming series. Dun dun dun, -dun series announcement. We're going to be doing a top-down RPG, JRPG, I guess, like Pokemon or Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest or any of those type games. We're going to be doing it entirely in visual scripting, an inventory made entirely from visual scripting, turn-based combat only in fungus. And today we are doing top-down player movement only using fungus. I've done another video using C Sharp, normal coding in Unity, if you want to follow that. But I did this for fun, so I hope you enjoy, and yep. Okay, <laughs> so this is what we're gonna learn how to do in this video. No animations yet, just an orb that can walk around, top-down movement. It doesn't go faster when you press both arrow keys at once which is something that happens if you're not careful. And we did it all using fungus, visual scripting only. It's probably easier to not do this, but it's really not that much different with visual scripting, which is cool. So let's learn how to do it. We have our player game object, which you can create a new game object by pressing the plus button here and creating empty and then it will appear here in the hierarchy. And if you have the inspector open over here, when you click on player, we can check out what components we added to our player. So we added a sprite renderer, and if you've downloaded Fungus from GitHub, which I have a short video on how to do, which I'll link in the description below, you'll have some basic shapes, some basic sprites. I just chose a circle and I stretched it out into a capsule shape here in the scene view because we're gonna want our top-down player to have a capsule collider attached because from a top-down perspective the player will be only colliding with objects in the feet and legs area and not in the head area because that's how a human body works when it collides with things. So I attached a capsule collider. You can attach all these components by going add component down here, typing in capsule collider. You want the 2D version. And if you're new to using colliders, you can change the collider shape by pressing edit collider and you can stretch it out and change the direction that it stretches in with direction because we want it to be horizontal so it can be a capsule this direction and not vertical capsule. So that's why I changed it to horizontal. Okay, so now down to our rigid body 2D. This is what allows our character to interact with physics and run into walls and have gravity if we wanted, but we don't want gravity this time because we are doing a top-down perspective. So if we had gravity on, it would just fall downwards on the y-axis instantly, so we turn this to zero. And I chose these numbers. You can fiddle with them to your heart's content to figure out what feeling of movement you want. And lastly, if we open up the constraints field down here, you want to check the freeze rotation Z. Otherwise, your character will spin over and over itself on the Z axis. Head, it'll do somersaults forever. And last but not least, we attached a flowchart to our player script. We are going to need this eventually for our player interacting with anything in the human world. Now we are going to work on the player movement in our flowchart, which we can open by pressing open flowchart window over here in the flowchart section, and it will open up a window. You can dock it by dragging this tab wherever you want. I like to have it up here. This is functionally the same as a C-sharp script, and if you wanted to create a new C-sharp script, you would right-click in the Project tab, 
go to create and create a C-sharp script if you want to copy my top-down player movement script in Visual Studio. If you don't like the visual scripting way to do it, you're going to want a public vector two movement and a reference private rigid body, a reference to the rigid body. And you'll want a public float called speed so you can change the speed of your player. Then you're gonna want in your update method, these three lines of code right here. In your start method, you are going to want to have this line of code and you're gonna want a fixed update method with just this line of code here in the middle. And that should do ya. But we are not covering that today. We are going to do exactly that in the flowchart. So first things first, you're going to want to right click, add block, or press the plus button up here to add a new block. And we are going to want to go to the execute on event section. You can click it twice to open up the categories mono behavior, and we want an update block. And here in fire on, we are just going to do normal update. We'll have a fixed update block as well. Then we're going to want to make a new block called move player. It's like creating a new method if you have any experience with coding. So right click again, add block, and you can title it move player. And then in this update block, once again, we are going to double click the plus down here go to flow section and do a call command. The call command will play the move player block. And because this is in our update block, it will play the move player block every frame of the game. As fast as the game can possibly execute what's in the move player block, it will execute it. And that's good because we want to be able to move our player you know, we want the input we put in for the player to feel responsive and not to feel laggy or, you know, like we're not in control of the player. And the most important thing here is you're going to want the call mode to be wait until finished. Because we are going to put more call commands in here. For instance, I created an animate player block because we're going to want to animate the player, I'll just go ahead and call the animate player block. There's nothing in it at the moment because we'll go through that next time. And we want move player to happen before we animate the player so we can tell exactly which direction the player is moving so we can animate accordingly. So that's why we want to press wait until finished. Otherwise it might animate in a weird offset kind of way. It won't animate correctly. Now let's go to our move player block where the real business starts happening. First we have a get axis command, which you can find in the input section under get access. Axis. So if you click it, you will get a get axis command accordingly. So here we want to type in the axis name horizontal. Now what this means is when we press left or right, the left or right arrow keys or the A and D button, we will go sideways. We, we will move horizontally, or we will eventually move horizontally. You can find the name horizontal. The reason why we can just type in the word horizontal and it knows that we mean the left and right arrow keys and the A and D button is here in project settings in input manager. If you open axes here, you can see one here named horizontal and it has the corresponding keys. You can put in controller buttons if you look up what the corresponding controller directions are. So that's how that makes any sense at all. And you want to check the axis raw button because we don't want velocity. We don't want um, change in momentum of our character. We're doing a really basic version so the longer you hold down the horizontal button we don't want to affect the speed we want it to be very responsive instead of the player moving slowly at first and then getting to max speed a little bit later and then we want to reference a variable so we're going to go over here and create a float variable by pressing the plus button twice and clicking on float a float variable is any variable that it deals with decimal points and 
go back to your move player block, click on this, and you can press the arrow key to the right of any of these fields to put in one of your fungus variables. What this whole command does is it saves uh, whether we're pushing left or right into a variable. And we're gonna use that variable to move the player that direction eventually. So now we can tell which key the player is pressing. Same with this, type in vertical, create a new float called movement Y, make sure you click the axis raw box. So now, we want to use those numbers we just got, movement X and movement Y. We want to use them so that we can eventually get the player to move somewhere. So I created a vector2 variable, which is the direction the player's going, the X and the Y combined. It'll go to other vector2, and you'll click on that and you'll get a variable. And I named it movement. So you're going to want to do a vector2 command, which is in property, all the way down, vector2. And we are going to want to set the x value of the vector2, the first value, the horizontal value. You'll click the left button here, you'll put in our movement variable, same thing here, and then you'll put in the movement x. So that's going to set our horizontal, our a and d buttons into movement. And it'll be a simple one or negative one value for if you're moving left or right. Same with this command, y, and then movement y. Now we want to set this into a vector 3, which this is where the visual scripting gets a little bit awkward. Because there's only a normalized command with vector 3s, which are a variable that holds three coordinates. Because the normalize command, which I'll get to what that means, only deals with vector 3s, we have to put our vector 2s into some vector 3s, our group of 2 coordinates into a group of 3 coordinates. So we're just going to set the x of a vector 3 command, which you can find in the property folder vector 3. We're going to set the x value of a vector 3 variable that we create to movement x, just put that in right there, same with the y variable. And then we are going to use a normalize command, which you can find in the vector3 section here at the bottom, normalize. What this does is when we're pressing an up button and a side button, the values aren't both 1. Because if they were both 1, we would move twice as fast whenever we were traveling diagonally. Some games, some really old games, just do that, and speedrunners always run diagonally in those games. So you can do that if you want and then this wouldn't be as complicated. But we just want to normalize the vector 3 that we've made so that the player doesn't move faster on the diagonal. So this is all for our move player method. And then we're going to go to fixed update where some more magic happens. Our fixed update is where we deal with physics. It's just uh, better and smoother dealing with physics. So create a new block execute on event update, and then you will fire on only the fixed update. Be careful because it'll automatically set to update. So when you click fixed update, it'll say mixed, and we don't want to fire it on both. So click update again, and then you'll only have fixed update checked here. The first thing we are going to do in this block is make a set variable command, which is in variable, set variable right there. We're going to want to put in our movement 3d variable, which is our vector 3, and we are going to want to multiply it by a new vector 3 variable that you'll create over here called speed. You'll want to go down here into operation and click the asterisk equals command, which is multiplying. We're going to be multiplying these two things, and the outcome of the multiplication will be saved in our movement 3d variable. So our speed variable, as you might have guessed, controls the speed of the player. I set the speed to 100 on the x and y. The z, don't set it to anything. It's a 2d game. It's a 2d game, okay? Now here, I had to create a new command, and I'll give it to you. It's not so bad. So here we go. To use this command, you'll go down here, and you will right-click in the Project tab. 
you'll go to create and you'll create a C-sharp script. My C-sharp script is here and the way you open it is you just double click it. So now here we are in Visual Studio with our get delta time command. And this is what's in here. It's a very simple fungus command. So erase everything in your new C sharp script and you're gonna start from scratch. You're gonna want to use the Unity Engine namespace, which will give us access to delta time, which I'll cover what that is in a second. You'll put in namespace fungus because we want to make a fungus command. And so we want to use the nice library of visual scripting commands that Chris Gregan once made. And then you're gonna put in some helpful command info here and add component menu, which will actually add it to the fungus menu and let you add a command. So I put it in the property section. I called the command get delta time and I put a description of what it is, which will help us understand why I had to make this command right now. So you wanna place this command in an update block to get the time in seconds since the last frame the computer renders. Delta time helps us know how fast the computer is working and drawing pictures on our screen. We want to use this so that we have smoother movement since the frame rates of computers are always changing. So if you didn't use delta time, your movement would be kind of choppy because it's not accounting for how the fast the computer is running and drawing pictures on your screen. And we're gonna wanna use a flungus, flungus float variable to store this value so that we can use it in our flowchart. And then add component menu right here. Then we're going to wanna to type in public class get delta time colon command because this is a fungus command. Put some brackets again around this whole thing and you can put a, this tooltip here to remind yourself how this works. Use the arrow to the right to make a flung, f flungus float variable. I did it again to be able to use the time.delta time value. You'll want a variable and you're going to want to serialize the field so you can see this variable in the inspector so you can put in your fungus float variable and just type this in exactly it's float data so we can drag in the variable instead of just a normal float variable if you're curious and we're going to name it delta time var and then last thing you're going to want to type in public override void on enter parentheses put some brackets we're going to want to make our delta time variable dot value equal to time dot delta time and put a semicolon on that and then the continue method which makes fungus move on to the next command okay so that's that back to unity we're going to go back to our fixed update to our new get delta time method which if you press the plus button should be under here in property uh, get delta time. Down here it uses our description for how to use it. So we're going to make a new delta time float over here and click the button on the right and choose our delta time variable. So now the frame rate of the computer will always be updating and we can always use it. I created this method just generally for a float but you could have it be vector3 data so you don't have to do both of these parts. I'm going to set the x of the vector3 I created called delta time for math because we're going to do math with this. So I'm setting the x of the vector3 variable to delta time and I'm also setting the y variable of this vector3 to delta time. Then we're going to use another set variable command and multiply our vector3 by delta time for math just like we did the last time. So now we did exactly what we did in my C sharp script we multiplied the player's movement the input we put in by speed and by delta time in order to set the velocity of our rigid body 2d to our vector 2 
because it will only take a vector 2 because it's a rigid body 2D, we are going to need to set our movement 3D variable, the X and Y, we're going to need to set the X and Y into our movement variable, which means we're going to have to use these four commands. So we're going to get the X variable of movement 3D and we're going to put it in our movement X variable. Same with the Y variable of movement 3D, we're going to save that into movement Y. Then we're going to set that X variable of movement X into our movement variable. Same thing with movement Y. And then finally, we are going to use the rigid body 2D command, which is here in property, actually. <laughs> it's not under rigid body 2D. And there it is. And you'll go here and you'll click set velocity, you'll drag in the player game object, so we're affecting the player's rigid body 2D, their physics object, the thing that controls the physics of the game object, and then we're going to put in our movement variable, the vector 2. And that's it. It should work now. Voila. Look at it go. So when I'm moving horizontally or just vertically, you can see the values are set to 1, but when I'm moving both directions, you can see the values get set to 0.7, so that we don't move faster on the diagonals than we do on the horizontals. That's it for this video. Next time we'll do the animation of a little character, and that's that. If you like this video, if you want to support the tutorializing of the great library that is Fungus, the nice visual scripting, then subscribe, comment how much you love me, and leave a like. <laughs> Don't comment how much you love me. <laughs> but thank you so much for 500 subscribers. Wow! The Fungus community is strong, and there's a game jam this month. So head on over to itch.io to check that out, or the Fungus Discord, which is linked below. And that's all I've got to say. So until next time, stay jolly.